salute to freedom My mass is getting stronger, let us be them These moves charge them with their treason What was their reason? Opposing evil He's standing still in the garden of Eden Deck to deck us, now we fly like eagle Even so army is having diarrhea Them shitting pants with their lack of ideas But they can see ya, say hello to Jesus Spitting the truth, he's a tactical genius we need revolution, and then we call him at man, we call him solution You know that we need him, the world needs to stay here No matter if you African, European Muto to oma masinamdikano Muto to oma masinamdikano Heba! Muto to oma masinamdikano Aina aste gadalu Muto to oma masinamdikano Aina aste gadalu
Beautiful people, great dear friends, lovers of freedom, our Ududua brethren, even those from the middle belt who have now risen up to seek their self-determination. I welcome each and every one of you to this very special, very, very special broadcast on this very day, Sunday, the 16th of May in the year of the Most High Elohim 2021. The time now is exactly four minutes past 7 p.m. in the land of Biafra. If you look at your timepiece, it is exactly four minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you are. We are live and we are direct and the whole world is listening. And Chukwu Kikabiyama in heaven is bearing us witness because we have come to preach the gospel that only him mandated must be preached to the sons of men. As always, since I am welcoming you, please welcome other people as well because there will not be a repeat of this type of broadcast ever again. It is only one in a million. Everybody must endeavor to listen very, very attentively. If you don't have your pen and your paper with you, I will even excuse you to try and get them. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to all of you who are listening, regardless of where your domicile and as always, we are multicasting this very broadcast on a whole host of platforms. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook, believe it or not. Mazen Namdekano. Some people don't believe it's, uh, it's mine, but it is. If you go there, you will be able to listen, not on the page, because Facebook will allow me to broadcast or stream this very content live on my Facebook page. If you go to Mazen Namdekano, some of you know it. It is real, it is mine. If you go there, you should be able to listen. It is not a fan page, it's just an ordinary um, profile, an ordinary um, page. If you go there, you should be able to listen to us this very evening. We are on app, IPOB Community Radio. We are on Radio Biafra app. We are, if you want to listen to us, you, you should and must be able to listen to us as long as you are in possession of an internet-enabled device. We are on satellite, we are on FM. Basically, we are everywhere. And I can assure you that the whole world is listening this evening, as they always do. And we are going to pray very, very shortly. My name is Mazen Namdekano. I am the leader of the Indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, all over this very planet Earth. The director of radio, Biafra and Biafra television. And by the very special grace of almighty creator in heaven, Chiku Kikabi Amapurumi, Henine Elohim, Adonai, Shaddai, I will now and forever remain a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. A very special race, a very special breed, the children of the Most High, the sons of light, the daughters of enlightenment. I welcome each and every one of you. I'm going to pray very, very briefly that we may commence what we have in store for you this evening. It will take us about two hours or roughly two hours and a few minutes, give or take either side, to bring to you what we have for you this very evening. Chinekanankeprumihanina. Tupu mama do we exist in this? Hano, we are homos. Tupu ndi na rona we kuni. Isra nyuzi na muo. Si ani noke gabi ambu ende fula ne gaba ta lansoge. Na hage me milo mama do. Na hage bunde mama do. We ne ba pa we ne tim kuni melo mbem na boku a lansoge. Nsi go njere nsuma rumbu epi ke papa kani kani game. Ongo kwenye kwa ramu kemsi rende dento na kwenye bread dengos. Isi na hage bua ni anyo mani ke bukwa ha. With a mason, Nanny get one one on way. Obi Hanyan, I don't get the bed and gossip. Near Hanya, I got a happy way for Arose, more buffet, and what thank you, Mother Dendo. Obi Amen, I land sorry, is the bed and gossip can you are a chupu, and then so. Open our land sorry came when they are not bomb with chupu. 
open our land so you can when they are not what omo ali where the children of the kingdom of heaven in any state and we have an apple omo ali where the children of the kingdom of heaven a name that came before white people even brought their bible to us we answer omo jubu we answer obasi we answer tamono these are your names, but these are also the names that will bear to say that the time has come for you to come down from heaven, that thy will upon the lives of your children may be done in our lifetime. And that time has come, and it is Biafra. Because you told me that they will invade our land, and that invasion has commenced. They have come, as you promised me. So in the coming weeks and months, Men and women are going to die. But after that, Piafra shall be restored. We want to be alive in the land of the living to give your name, praise, adoration, adulation, exaltation, and glory. Because Biafra is yours. Now and forevermore we pray. He say, he say, he say. Very many years ago, I told you something that has come to light this very day. That in time to come, that the Janjawood will come into our land. And they have come. The funniest thing is that they did not just come into our land. They are also in Yoruba land, as we speak. And I'm sure that the revelations I have to make this evening, the zoo will be astonished. I'm even sure that the British intelligence services do not have what we have in our possession this very evening. And I'm sure that the Fulani Janjaweed, who are in control of Abu Bakr Yusuf Muhammad, the idiot from Niger Republic wearing Buhari mask, do not even know what I'm talking about. But this evening, the zoo will be shocked to understand that there is nothing they do, there is no move they make that we are not aware of. But first of all, I'm going to start with an article that I saw in one of the um, online newspapers in the zoo is from Sahar Reporters. And I was absolutely astonished when I saw it because I didn't quite believe that they were capable of publishing such a material. We are living in very strange times, I can assure you. I never believed that they are capable of publishing this, but I'm going to read it for you by way of a preamble to build the foundation upon which our discourse this evening is going to rest. That is why I said I'm going to speak very slowly so that you can understand every single word, every single syllable that I pronounce, because this very broadcast will not be like any other, I assure you. Your pen and paper must be very close to you. And I want you to, to understand that as soon as, as soon as we finish this very program, I want it to be put on MP3 and distributed all over the world as you normally do. I want it on SoundCloud. I want this very program this evening to go far and wide. This could be your morning or your afternoon, but from where I am, it is evening. So you must allow me or excuse me when I make reference to the time that we are in, which is evening here that I am at this precise moment. This article, the headline is Stop Calling Eastern Security Network a Terrorist Group by Adebayo Raphael, published by Sahara Reporters. And I'm going to read it, please, if you bear with me. The Nigeria that Buhari desperately desires is one in which all Nigerians practice fatalism. The day we all become fatalists in the face of the mighty oppression and injustice happening under Buhari's regime is the day we stop being free. In other words, there's an acknowledgement by this very writer that we are living under a regime of terror and bondage. The only mistake he made was to refer to it as a Buhari regime. It is not. It is an organized Fulani banditry regime. Fulani Caliphate is in charge of everybody right now in the zoo as we speak. But what troubles me is that they have managed to get into the minds of the people. Not into the minds of IPOB, of course, heaven forbid. They have now managed to get into the minds of the people. And that is why they are able to wreak havoc. And I want everybody, those of you from the Middle Belt, those of you from the South, those of you who are still in support of One Nigeria, I want you to understand what is to come as a result of your foolishness and your stupidity. You are handing over your land to Fulani people 
and I'm going to prove it to you this very evening. This very brilliant writer, Adebayo Rafe, went on to say that the news mediums reporting ESN as a terrorist group are doing a great disservice to the Nigerian people. Do you understand this very clearly? There are some media houses, some newspapers and all the rest of them trying as much as they can, of course, with very limited success to tag Eastern Security Network, a terrorist group. And why are they trying to do that? Why do you think they want to tag ESN, a terrorist group? Not Fulani bandits, no, not Miet Yala, not at all. Not those killing, raping, pillaging, and sacking towns and villages. Not at all. Not those that have renamed some villages in Benue State into Fulani names. No, they're not terrorists. It is ESN. Why? Ask yourself that simple question. Because Eastern Security Network is on record as being the only people to drive away Miet Yala from any state in the entire Nigeria. We drove Miet Yala away from a Bony state after four years of war. Four good years of war, they ran away from a Bony state. That is why they have now gone to go and bring in their big guns, their big brothers. But we're going to face them and we shall defeat them. Miet Yala was in a Bony state as a fully fledged, functioning, full and sponsored terror group. Even your so-called presidency said in the public that they are legitimate stakeholders in the government. In other words, what is happening in Nigeria today is an organized full and banditry. But some of you in the South are too stupid. You are too useless. You are too hopeless. You are too idiotic to see what Fulanis are doing to you. But it's going to happen. Because before I came on air this evening, I had confirmation that they are now in Lagos. That was what they were trying to cleverly disguise as IPOB attack on Lagos. I want to let you understand, if I tell the terror group in Lagos, you will, you will, you will marvel, but we know we have their intel and I'm going to give it to you this evening as we proceed. They are trying to get you to tag ESN, a terrorist group. Why? Because we defeated Miet Yala in the East. We rendered them useless. It was because of the work that Eastern Security did in the past, is doing now, and will continue to do. That is the reason why the Southern governors came together in Asaba only last week to announce a ban on open grazing, to try for the very first time in their lives to confront head on this Fulani Islamic hegemony as a result of the bravery and sacrifice of Eastern Security Network men and women. Without ESN, by now, all of you would have been, it would have been over for all of you. By now, without this IPOB, all of you would have been gone. You see, I told you before that there is a method to our madness. We proceed very, very gingerly and cautiously trying to take our people with us every step of the way, but above all, their understanding of the very perilous times that we are living in. These are the things you must calm down to educate yourself because sometimes our people are always in a hurry. They're always in a hurry in the process. They fail to factor in every variable that will enable them or that should enable them to understand the tactics of the enemy. Most of you don't understand the way the Fulanis operate, but we do. That is why we have been able to predict every of their move. This very person is telling us that anybody saying that ESN is a terrorist group wants you to become weak, wants you to become the oppressed inside Nigeria. What IPOB is doing is to defy oppression is to confront evil face to face. We have paid very dearly for it, and we are still paying for it. But the sacrifices we are making is to ensure that the generations to come after us cannot endure this level of oppression, this level of humiliation. Now listen to me very carefully. What the Fulanis are doing according to this writer, Debayo Raphael, by attempting to tag ESN a terrorist group, 
is to tell every Nigerian that you can never be free. That freedom means being targeted and killed by the Nigerian state. He went on to say, but I reject that. We cannot be free and not be free. In other words, if you decide to cage the people, they must rise up one day to agitate. He went on to remind us very, very simply that on 30th of May 2016, about 1,000 women, men, and children were peacefully marching to commemorate the killing of roughly, uh, he said 2 million, of course, it's not 2 million, it's 5 million Biafrans that were killed between 67 and 1970 by the Nigerian state and their British allies. There we are on the receiving end of a very terrible, inhumane terrorist blitzkrieg, that was what he called it, by the Nigerian security forces under the Melfic orders of Buhari at that time when he was still alive. On that very day, a report by Amnesty, which all of you have, you know, you know, all forgotten, of course. A report by Amnesty International confirmed that no less than 150 peaceful Biafran commemorators were shot and killed. At least 70 of them injured as a result of attacks over two days, over two days, by Nigerian army and police. All of you have all forgotten because you are black people. He went on to enumerate that this series of massacre of IPOB people were intended to put fear into us. They were intended to make us bow before the Fulani Caliphate so that others may become amenable to the rule of the Janjaweed. But because IPOB stood strong despite all the things that we went through, that is the reason why people, especially from the South and to an extent from the North, from the Middle Belt are now beginning to rise up to say that enough is enough due to all those sacrifices. My father went into it as well and was sacrificed. So was my mother, my men died defending me in my house. This very article went on to enumerate in great detail every illegal activity brought upon the people of Biafra by the Nigerian states that some of you seem to have forgotten. He went on to say that no Nigerians signed the contract of human rights violations and enforced disappearances. They are kidnapping people today, selling their parts to the Chinese. In other words, if you go to China now and you order penis wonton soup, you will see the penis of young men from Biafra land in your bowl of wonton soup in China. Right now, as we speak, the kidnapping, the disappearances are going on, nobody's talking. Any day we react to it, all of you fools from the South and to an extent from the Middle Belt will be shouting and writing your usual rubbish. Now that extrajudicial disappearances and enforced killings are going on, now, right now, in our land, nobody's talking. The day we react, all of you will start jumping up and down. And I will come to the brain of the black man later on because I have something in store for you this evening, at least to help clear up, clear up all those cobwebs that makes you, um, or should I say, predisposed to stupidity and mind control by people you should be controlling instead. The Fulanis have come to take over our land and we have said to them that they're not going to do it. We are not going to allow them to do it. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. And the sooner they understand this, the better for everybody. Because one thing that the Janjaweed must bear in mind is this, is that this very generation of IPOB, we're not going to allow it. And I want, you can call me a terrorist, you can write all the junk you like. I want, you see, the Flamies are very clever. They, before they came, they used to rely on Yoruba media houses to do their dirty work for them. But as the Yoruba media houses were doing their dirty work for them, and of course, some Igbo media houses as well, like some newspaper, they went back and created their own. Some of you didn't know there was a newspaper called the New Nigerian Newspaper in those days, trying to trumpet the position of the North, or should I say the Arewa Kosh Sharia North. Today, they have the Daily Trust and they have Premium Times doing a very beautiful job for them. Their job is to assuage you that the ones that will come and inflict injury and pain on you, they are the ones telling you, oh, don't worry, it will be better, you will get healed. They will never tell you that the person beating you will ever stop beating you. No, they will tell you, oh, don't worry. Isn't it only pain? After a while, you get over it. 
I want the likes of all Joseph Carlo, all these Fulefus to understand what I'm saying this evening. You people have placed our lives in danger. Because of you, that is why all these killings are going on all over the place by the full name. Because of you, those of them in the West, like Tinubu or Basanjo and all the rest of the fools over there. Because of you, that is why this evening, as I'm as I'm right here on air preaching, Yoruba people are paying ransom to go to their farms to go and farm in Yoruba land. The media will not report it. The same way they will not report how many soldiers they have lost so far. That is their new game plan. But in Biafra land, they will keep dying. That I assure them. Kidnap all you like. Intimidate all you like. Oppress all you like. But let me tell you something you don't quite understand. We are involved in a nationalist pursuit. We are pursuing the freedom of our land. And it can never stop. I want Fulan to understand this very clearly. Understand it very, very clearly. We are not going to stop. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. If you have come to our land to kill us, you are going to die there. That I can assure you. I am not perturbed by the tag of terrorism, by the tag of uh, your proscribed, the proscribed outlawed IPOB, a human being in Nigeria who is suffering, a journalist who is suffering, a media house that understands the pain, the suffering, the anguish, the torments that the people are going through every day is starting this junk on a daily basis. And the Fulani Janja will, will they're all going to find you. They will find you. Do you know that people are being kidnapped in Aba by the Nigerian army sent to Sokoto? They are now demanding ransom. A man paid 6 million naira only four days ago to have the wife, his second wife, released to him that was taken to Sokoto. Are you sure you people don't actually understand what is happening around you? We are in a state of war. They've not declared it, but we are in a state of war. Nelson Mandela was called a terrorist. Yes, Nelson Mandela. Go and do your research because everything I tell you is gospel. Nelson Mandela was tagged a terrorist. Oliver Cromwell, that brought a semblance of the rule of the people. The, the reason why in England you have the House of Commons today that the power resides with a commoner, a prime minister, like Boris Johnson is because of Oliver Cromwell. Are you listening to me very carefully? The reason why the House of Common People in England is the strongest house you have, not the House of Lords. They are the ones that make the laws. The reason why in England today, somebody who is not either a landed gentry or somebody who is not from the royal family or somebody who is not titled, like an earl, a lord, a viscount, is not the prime minister, is because of a man called Oliver Cromwell, an Englishman. He too was called a terrorist. So too was George Washington. During America's War of Independence, George Washington, this America that every, every, every ant wants to go to, this same United States of America that everybody will die to go and live in, is called the land of the free. Or should I say the land of the brave and the free? The man that made it possible is George Washington. The British called him a terrorist. I am saying all of these things tonight so that if you're called a terrorist because you're an IPOB, because you fund ESN, it is a badge of honor. After following what I'm reading out to you tonight, you will understand it. Who are we compared to Nelson Mandela? Of course, we are nobody. That he was called a terrorist. It didn't stop him. It did not stop the armed wing of ANC come to what is way from doing their job to make sure that apartheid collapses. Apartheid where South Africa abducted, abdu anything abductable they abducted, they killed, they massacred. At the end of the day, the will of the people prevailed. Our people should not despair. We are going through a very difficult time, aided and abetted by the likes of um, the Sarikin uh, Fulani. Of him, Hope, Ozodema, the likes of Ojos or Carlo. I'm sure by now that Rochas have repented. He has, he has asked his, in fact, his eyes are, are now open. All the Fulefus talking about one Nigeria is now very clear to all of you that the Fulanis do not mean well. 
not for us who are fighting them, neither for you who are their slaves. If Nelson Mandela can be called a terrorist, who am I? Oliver Cromwell was a terrorist. George Washington was a terrorist. Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe was a terrorist. Even, let me shock you, all of you now. Some of you may have heard about a man called Dr. Zikiwe. Dr. Namdi Zikiwe is his name. I hate to add a Namdi to his name because he doesn't behave like one. Do you know that Dr. Zikiwe was called a terrorist and exiled to Ghana? Are you aware of that? Do you know who called him a terrorist? The same Britain, United Kingdom. Are you aware of that? Dr. Zikiwe that fought and set Nigeria free. Do you know he was sent to jail by the British? Do you know that Ahmad Dubele never went to jail? Do you know that Abu Bakr Tafawa de Balewa never went to jail? The only people that went to jail are those from the south, Awolowo and Azikiwe, are the only people that went to jail in order to set Nigeria free. Are you aware of that? No, you don't know. And they were called terrorists. Yes, Nam Azikiwe was called a terrorist by the British. You must listen to me attentively. I said this program cannot be like any other. You must listen attentively this evening, please. And invite people to come and listen as well. Nam Azikiwe was called a terrorist by the British. Chief Obafemi Awolowo was not spared. Chief Obafemi Awolowo was called a terrorist as well for trying to set his people free. I want IPOB to know tonight that being called a terrorist because you're fighting for your land and your nation is a badge of honor. It means you've arrived. It means the enemy is scared of what you're doing. And it means that you're succeeding at whatever thing that you're doing. Are you following me? If you are in freedom fighting anywhere in the world and the people you're fighting have not come to refer to you as a terrorist, then that means you're not doing anything. That means you're not threatening the status quo. Do you understand me very well? That is why in our case, we are, there is no democracy because in Africa, there is no democracy. People are very primitive. People are basically like wild animals in the forest. They have no brain. That is the reason why we need to agitate the way we are agitating or else we can never be free. Understand this very, very clearly, please. Awolowo was also a terrorist. I'm, uh, for the sake of Yoruba journalists in uh, working for channels television, all those Yoruba people writing for the Punch newspaper, I also want to let you know tonight that Awolowo was once a terrorist because he was fighting for you. I hope you understand what I'm saying this evening. The world knows we are not terrorists. We have not gone to markets to bomb people. We have not gone to mosques to bomb people. We have not been to churches to kill people. We have not killed anybody, as a matter of fact. What ESN is doing is driving away full and terrorists in our forests. How can that make us a terrorist? By pursuing terrorists. How is that possible? How is that possible? Now pay attention to what I have to say. Do you remember those police they sent to Somalia? And I want people in Lagos to confirm this. I want my Yoruba brothers and sisters to confirm this, please, tonight and tomorrow morning. Do you know those police people they sent to Somalia? Ask yourself, why would any sensible country in the world send their police to Somalia? Is that possible? Do you know what they went to Somalia to do? I think that the Nigerian government will be shocked tonight that we have this intel. And I want to let them understand that the M branch of this very movement of IPOB to restore Biafra. Our M branch is far more resourceful than any other organization in the whole. There is no move they make, we don't know. We know how many tanks they are bringing. We know how many soldiers they are bringing. We know the type of armaments they are bringing. Everything we know. Ask the National Security Advisor of Nigeria. Ask their head of national military intelligence in Nigeria. Ask all the so-called big wigs of intelligence in Nigeria. And also ask the British, why did Nigeria send a so-called policeman to Somalia to go and train people? Do you know what they went to Somalia to do? They went to go and recruit Al-Shabaab terrorist operatives to come to Nigeria to help them fight this war. That was why they went to Somalia. I'm sure this night they will be shocked 
how we knew this information. They went to Somalia. There is no country in the world after the debacle of U.S. rescue mission, Operation Hope, under George Bush, senior. No country in the world has ever dared to send their people into Mogadishu. Only Nigeria. Why? To go and recruit the very deadly Al-Shabaab terror group to come and fight for them. Remember the intel all over the place. America gave you intel a few weeks ago. I also have the latest one they gave today. When America said that terrorists are now moving south, I want to let the whole world understand. I want Tinubu to understand that if you, you, if you are from Jack, you're not safe. These are the people who are surrounding Lagos today. They are the ones in the forests of Yoruba land. Their leaders have come. The Nigerian government, the Fulani Caliphate government, sent their hardened men to Somalia to go and recruit Al-Shabaab terror group because they do not have the numbers to fight in the South. So they are complementing it with terrorists they are now recruiting across the Sahel, but most importantly, Al-Shabaab in Somalia. That was why they went to Somalia. Have you had any updates since they went to Somalia? Have they tried to show you anybody they have recruited from Somalia or how they're helping the Somali government? Have they done so? The answer is no, because their motive there is sinister. They went there to go and recruit Al Shabaab terrorists to come to kill all of you, shouting one Nigeria with green, white, green flag. You know, sometimes I think that Elohim in heaven, is maybe trying to hold us back to unleash this thing from the Fulani so that all the Fulefus, all the Fulefus will die in misery and in regret. That was why they went to. Somalia to go and recruit Al Shabab to come to fight for them. And this Al Shabab, they are the ones who are in Lagos planning to attack Lagos. The Tinubu told the police commissioner to say it is IPOB. Are you following what I'm saying? Ask your, oh my chinek, black people, why, why, why did God make me a black person? I don't understand why people cannot reason. Let me ask you again. Ever since their police went to Somalia, it is a foreign expeditionary mission. How come there is no update? How many Somalis they have trained? Have you ever, how, brain of a black man, have you ever wondered why you don't hear anything about that? For the very simple reason that they went to recruit terrorists, Al-Shabaab, and they are the ones now in and around Lagos, planning to launch multiple attacks in Lagos. And the human being, somebody that claims he has conscience, woke up in the morning and decided to blame IPOB for it. When Tinubu knows that those who are in the bushes and forests in and around Lagos are Al Shabaab, hardened Somali terrorists, all the way from Mogadishu that they brought him. Of course, history will be kind to IPOB. As this, our brother have just written. His name is, uh, is Adebayo Raphael. If, if they say to you in this life that Yoruba people will rise up to, to write glowingly in defense of IPOB, you will not believe it, but it is here very clear in black and white. Al Shabaab is in around Lagos because Fulani knows they don't have the numbers. They cannot win this war. Nigeria has never won any war on its own before in its history. They always rely on people to fight for them. After they fight, they'll start making math. That's all they do. That is all they do. And to tell you that this is a concerted effort to colonize everybody. Ever since they had their so-called security meeting last week and decided to invade the South. Some of you think it's only the East that are coming to, that are coming to the entire South. Have you been hearing about bandits doing this or doing that anymore? They have promised them that the oil money is theirs. That is why, Madam Tambuwal, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. The attack is coming. You can't escape it because it's too late. They understand that come 2023, should power leave the north, they are finished. 
So they must attack this. In fact, we are now forcing them to attack one year earlier than they had planned. This attack was meant to commence in 2022, but they are starting in 2021 because of IPOB and Eastern Security Network. May glory and praise be to the Almighty in heaven. Lagos is surrounded by Al Shabaab, and that is why Tinubu is trying to pin it on IPOB without success, of course. And I also want, listen to me very carefully this evening, please, and be writing it down. I want the Nigerian government to know this. Nigerian government, the Chinese have promised to sell you weapons. You have moved money to Shanghai. The money, I did not mention Beijing. I said Shanghai. Shanghai is where you are right now. Purchasing weapons from the Chinese. China have agreed to sell weapons to Nigeria. They have also signed an agreement to supply Nigeria with weapons. I did not say Beijing. I said you are in Shanghai. That is where you are right now negotiating to bring those weapons in because you have... The main strike force of Al-Qaeda is in Benue State and the hardened remnants that you get from Boko Haram, they are now moving to the east from Bauji. That is a three-pronged attack coming to the south. And I want Middle Belt to understand this very clearly. By the time the attack intensifies in the south, nobody will remember you, you are gone. Three-pronged attack. The Nigerian government recruited three hardened terror groups to fight this very battle for them. Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab, they are in and around Lagos and Yoruba land. They are the ones to lead the attack against Yoruba people. The main strike force of Al-Qaeda in the Maghreb, they are advancing through Benue. They will enter into Kogi. From there, they will come into Anambra and Enugu. Whereas the main Boko Haram front, recruited by this same government, they are coming from Ebony. But they are based in Bauchi, they are coming from Bauchi. That is where the armor, that is where the tanks are that they have given to them with which to come and kill people because they have promised them the oil and gas in Biafra land and that Allah gave Nigeria to Fulani people. Today's date is the 16th of May, 2021. I pray to Elohim that this doesn't come to pass, but it's going to happen. And when it happens, as usual, people will go back to this, but, oh, but, but he said it all. He, he's a prophet. He said it all. Because you cannot stop what is coming. And I want you to know those to blame when they start massacring your men, women, and children. You will blame Obasanjo, you will blame Tinubu, you will blame Odios or Carlo. You will blame, I don't even want to mention the Sarekin Fulani Hope, so that is irrelevant. You will blame Rochas Okorocha. You will blame the Innamanis. You will blame Iwanyawun. You will blame Mrs. Tambua. You will blame the likes of um, uh, Edwin Clark. All these appeasers of Fulani. They always are peaceful and they want to please them. One Nigeria, the person you are doing one Nigeria for, does Fulani believe in one Nigeria? So you think that by Fulani opening their mouth and saying one Nigeria, they are doing it because they love you? Are you stupid? Are you that foolish? They're doing it because they want to conquer you. And in fact, you are conquered already. You are conquered already. Nigeria, are you not in Shanghai purchasing weapons right now, this very night? True or false, we know. When you bring them in, we are going to know. When you deploy them, we are going to know. When we destroy them in Biafra land, we will also tell you that we've destroyed them. That is to let you understand that our own intelligence is more than yours. Because in Yoruba land right now, not only are they refugees in Benin Republic, which some of them do not know, because the news is being suppressed, Yoruba people are paying ransom to go to their farms. Ask yourself this question. Somebody as, um, as, um, as um, influential as Wole Shoinka cannot go to his farm. He's a Yoruba man. Wole Shoinka, of course, one of the people that I blame for the mess that Nigeria is in. A man who is learned should, have, should be educating those of us. Should be foretelling the dangers to come by virtue of his academic accomplishments. He was the one supporting Fulani Janjaweed. I don't know if they were doing it to spite the Igbo people. I don't know what for. That same man cannot go to his farm. 
Are you following what is happening? Are you following what is happening? Of course, they gave us BBC Yubo to do to us what <laughs> Punch and all these channels have been doing to Europe as for long. They're in front of you, they'll be doing a yo-yo. One Nigeria, one Nigeria, you're dancing from the back. They're slaughtering you. They're slaughtering you. Because Fulani needs to create a diversion. And they are masters at that. They know how to divert your attention. They are very good at it. And that was what our brother was writing about, Adeba Raphael. ESN is a terror group. Nobody will ask them, but did ESN bomb any church? Did they go somewhere raping and killing people? Did they steal anything belonging to anybody? The answer is no. So what qualifies them as a terrorist? Oh, no, because they're fighting Fulani. They are fighting your Janja Buddhism. That is why they're terrorists. And being black people, very cowardly, very wicked, all of you are quiet. And I said this thing before, and I will say it again to the hearing of the whole world. Black people are suffering all over the world because we are a very wicked race. You can never see something evil happening and rise up to say that this is evil. Regardless of that person's ethnicity or tribe or religion, you say this thing is evil. I was in detention. I was paying for wrongfully convicted and wrongfully accused um, northern boys to have access to decent legal representation. I was paying for it. I was in detention. I was paying for it. I was paying for people who were wrongly accused of being Boko Haram members to be set free. I did not mind which tribe they came from. There is a video circulating. I want all of you to circulate. I was in high court. I was the one that paid for their parents to come to Abuja, to high court, that I may tell the whole world where their children were being kept. I did not do it because they were um, uh, Igbo or Efi or Ibibio or Biafra. Or, no, 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 not at all. Because they are human beings. And the truth must prevail. And I'm telling you, maybe that is the reason why, despite all their attempts to kill me, they have not managed to do so. Because this God that we serve in heaven can see the hearts of men, even in secret. And know that I harbor no ill feelings towards anybody on this earth. All I want is to be free. The reason why I want to be free is because Nigeria can never work, not today, not tomorrow, not ever. And I have pride and I have honor. I cannot be following white people all over the place, staying in a white man's land, walking, them giving me everything, 24 hours, electricity, um, housing, education, everything, and I cannot give the same thing to my people. If I can't do that, means I'm a failure in life. That's why we want Biafra. Not out of hatred for anybody, not at all. But Fulani wants to take our land, and we're saying, no, they cannot take it. And some of you idiotically are supporting them. In the next coming months, you will see the result of the damage you have done to yourselves. You will see it. Because I know that full energy and we need access to our oil and our gas. And I'm telling the UK government today, Katrina Lang, all these plans you're putting in place because the person on the ground directing this full attack is a woman, a white woman, Katrina Lang. That's the one doing all this work for Britain. Britain, one day, you see this little snake you're feeding, this full and agenda Buddhism you're supporting, they will destroy you. One day, they will kill British people in your so-called Nigeria. Go and mark my words somewhere. You people never learn. History is replete with Islamic governments you've helped in the past. They came back to bomb and to kill you. I'm talking about Britain, the UK. So we'll fall and kill you one day. All this aiding and abating of atrocity upon atrocity. The reason why the Fulanis are coming now is because Britain told them to attack now because Israel is under siege from Hamas. That is the signature, that is the handwriting of Britain, that is the way they operate. The reason why Harold Wilson allowed the British to support the Fulani Janjaweed to kill five million people, the second worst genocide in the history of man was in 1967, two things happened. At the same time, Israel was under attack. As at now. Israel was under the Yom Kippur War of 1967. Israel was under attack. As Israel was under attack, Gowon launched his, his strike at, at Gekin. 
Britain calculated that the whole Vietnam War and everything will take over world attention. And the whole world now is focused on Israel. So the foreigners can now come to Biafra land and kill as many people as possible. Britain will ensure that the world will not hear about it. Are you following what I'm preaching? Are you following what I'm saying? Because what I'm giving you is gospel from heaven. It's your Chineke. The reason why they chose now to attack, it won't surprise me. I don't know. I don't have the intel yet, but it won't surprise me if Nigeria and United Kingdom has in hand in the attack that Hamas is launching against the of Israel. I'm, I'm being honest with you. Or maybe they knew about it. Of course, they have a very credible and formidable intelligence services. They knew about it. And what they decided was, Nigeria, this is your time now to move in because the global attention is on Israel. Go to Biafra and kill as many as you can. Subdue and suppress them. Do you know how I knew that this was going to happen? Anywhere Katuna Lang visits, anywhere she goes to, give it only two weeks, the army will move in there to kill people. The British, I'm telling you, it's simple research, go and do it. Anytime there is a crisis, the British High Commission of Katrina Line, anywhere, anytime she's on the move, you are finished. She was the woman that visited Bola Ahmed, the Tunubu. The next day, people were dying around Lake Itogit. After visiting Ojo Zokalo to go and gauge the poles of the East, Ojo Zokalo gave them the go ahead to come to our land to kill us. Katrina Lang, that's the woman's name, British High Commissioner to the zoo called, that they created called Nigeria. And people don't want to understand because we are, I'm going to come to the issue of black people later on because the time has come for us to begin to reason properly like human beings. Do you know somebody called Davin Anderson, the US intelligence chief? He warned that Southern Nigeria needs to keep its eyes open. Terror groups have taken over the region. This is the news being reported three hours ago. Three hours ago. Go and Google it. Southern Nigeria needs to keep its eyes open. Terror groups have taken over the region. This was what Tinubu was trying to pin on IPOB. <laughs> Are you following me? This was what Tinubu was trying to pin on IPOB. So when Al Shabaab are busy slaughtering people in Yoruba land, Tinubu will say it's IPOB that is doing it. But as God will have it, the, the love I have for Yoruba people stemming from the love they have shown to me, I'm, I'm being honest with you. We talk privately. The land of Baya, the Banjo, the land of Ghani Adams, the, the land of, uh, of Iboho, the land of Femi Fanikayo, the, the land of Papa Shoranti, the land of my late friend. Why would I go and attack it? They don't know that we are under oath. Do you know we are under blood oath with our Yoruba brethren? Are you aware of that? Blood oath. That we can never, ever, not in a billion years, work against each other. Never! That is why you see their rallies. You see the way they do their rallies? That is why everywhere is bubbling. And the intelligence officer that spoke to us told us that um, they don't want to attack Yoruba yet. Their plan before was to attack Yoruba first take over Yoruba land and then come to the east to subdue us. But that the only people they fear is IPOV. Go and ask them. That is why they want to demonize us. If you're from the south, I want you to listen very carefully. If you're Biafra, if you do the war, even from, from the Middle Belt. The United States has said that the southern part of Nigeria should stay on alert because terror groups are already establishing their presence in the country and moving down south. The warning was made in a media briefing by Darwin Anderson, commander of the U.S. Special Operations Command Africa. He said, Al-Qaeda is also expanding to other parts of West Africa. We have engaged with Nigeria and continue to engage with them in intel sharing and in understanding what these violent extremists are doing. Not IPOB. Al-Qaeda is there. Al-Shabaab is there. Three-pronged attack. ISIS in West Africa is there. And Tinubu wants to pin it on IPOB. Do you see how evil these men are? 
But our God is fighting for us. That is why we receive what they don't even have this intelligence we do. I know we are buying weapons now, Fulani. Fulani can never fight a war on their own. And I told you that all the barracks you see in the east, they're empty. Nobody wants to join their army. That is why they're drafting people from Babuchi. If you claim that it's the division in Enuku is strong, Obinze is strong, or Hafe is strong, or Nature is strong, they are all there to intimidate all of you into submission that the flan is going to rule over you. That's all. There are no men. They have to go and now they are recruiting terrorist groups to come and fight for them. You must understand what is happening. Therefore, it, didn't, it never came to me as a surprise. Katrina Lang, the, the UK High Commissioner to Nigeria, wants the Igbo race to be wiped out. The same way people want the Jews to be killed. Any day our people rise up to recognize and understand this, the better for all of us. Some people want us dead. Not that we have done anything to them. Huh? No, not at all. But because United Kingdom believes that the coming of Biafra will herald the coming of Christ, that the world will come to an end. Any day the black man acquires reason. Any day the black man can build a car. Any day the black man can feed himself. That day the world will come to an end. That's what they believe in. And they know that it is Biafra that holds the key. They understand that very well. That is why it never came to me as a surprise that after Katrina Lang visited the Arch Strait of Jesus of Carlo, the very amorphous, headless monster known as Flannery Caliphate declared effectively the Second Biafran War. Something tells me, as I told you earlier, that the timing of this war on Biafra has something to do with Britain. Because in like 1967, Israel today is at war, the same way they were at war when Nigeria attacked Biafra in 1967. They now want to use it as a cover, as a cover to commit genocide. And I'm telling Biafrans tonight that we are effectively on our own. We have been given two choices by the United Kingdom, the slave masters and the colonizers. The UK have given us only two alternatives, and I call it the devil's alternative, of course. We either submit to the will of their puppets, the Islamic Caliphate, or we will be wiped out from the face of this very earth. The question you must ask yourself tonight as a Biafran, as a Southerner is, do you want to be a slave to the Fulani Caliphate, or do you want to die on your feet? live for a thousand years on your knees as most of them are doing without even knowing it or you die on your feet the devil's alternative whichever option we choose men are going to die which one do you prefer are we going to fight and die like men or are we going to submit to a life of Allah Akbar it's entirely up to you the time is now because the enemies they have come I'm not I didn't say they are coming they have not come into our land. And as I promised them, if God is on our side, which I know he is on our side, this army of Nigeria will die in Biafra land. That is how God intended it to happen. Many of us are going to die. And I'm, I'll be leading it myself, mind you. Many of us are going to die. But Biafra is going to come. And everything called Nigeria will perish in Biafra land. The world must be prepared for what is to come. We are not going to be slaves in our land. I want to let Katrina Lang, the UK government, to understand this. That we have chosen the path of death than to submit to the will of the Fulani Caliphate. Death is better for us. People are dying every day. They're not human beings. People are dying every day. Are we better than them? Those who are dying, are we better than them? We must develop the mindset of the Afghanis. In Afghanistan, that is why Afghanistan cannot be taken. It doesn't matter the firepower you have. NATO is in Afghanistan. Are they taking Afghanistan? The answer is no. You are coming to kill us, but you, we are also going to die together in the land of Biafra. Let anybody say I did not warn them because things are going to start happening in the next 14 days. When it starts happening, if Lefus may talk and yap and write their rubbish. But now that the Fulanis are kidnapping our people, 
disappearing us, killing people in truckloads. Nobody's talking. We must make our land impregnable for them. And that will involve a lot of destruction. I'm saying it live on air so that all of you will understand. To slow the advance down, we need to destroy a lot of things. We must destroy a lot of things. That is how you, all of you, will come to your senses to understand that we are in a state of war. They want to circle us. They are using the fillets amongst us to try to be, you know, assuaging your, your, should I say, your bruised egos, all of you, writing no rubbish about one Nigeria. From next two weeks, we are going to start dying for what we believe in. Not one or two or three or four. We are going to die en mass, and we are going to take them with us. By the time the slaughter happens, it will be so, so intense that you see that CNN, they'll come to Biafra to cover this very war. That is about to happen. You see CNN, all of them running away from Biafra, they'll cover it by force because we are going to kill every Nigerian soldier on Biafran soil will die. God is my witness. And I will lead this very army myself. I want the UK to understand that we have chosen to die than be slaves. At the end of this newly declared war against Biafrans, many of us will perish, but out of these very ruins, Biafra is going to rise up again to the eternal glory of Chukwuki Kapiama Premihenina in heaven, that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want them to understand. Let it not be tomorrow. People say, oh, that, but the suicide bombing is not uh, part of our nature. It's not our life. It's not our culture. Now, now, that full are there. We are going to die with them. We are their friends. As they will say, being a Liverpool fan, what we do in life echo in history, as they sing. What you achieve in life will echo it because it's appointed unto man to die only but once. Earlier, I was mentioning Mandela. I mentioned George Washington. I mentioned Oliver Cromwell. I mentioned uh, Mugabe. I mentioned, I don't even know if I mentioned Castro or not. All these were called terrorists. They are all dead, but they are immortal because we still mention them till this very day. We, are, we crave immortality. And in 14 days, it will start. Don't say I did not warn you, please. Don't say I didn't warn you. Fulani brought war to our land. All we asked them to do was to leave our forest and go and live in the township. Rent a house and live in the town. Bring down your nama. Sell it and do whatever you want to do with it. You cannot stay in our forest. You cannot stay there. If you stay there, you will die. That is the only crime that... Eastern Security Network committed. Nobody can tell us today if their mosque has been bombed by ESN or any church or any village or anyone, nothing. So these people you're calling terrorists, what is their crime? Because they said that we, should, we cannot take over their land. That is the crime of ESN and IPOB by extension. As I told you a few weeks ago, the Janjaweed have opened the floodgates of hell. And unto thy hands, O Elohim, we commit our spirit. As they will say in one very popular movie, those of us who are about to die, we salute you. Because the land of Biafra will be defended with the blood of anything that moves. Rather than the fallen need to take over Biafra land, there will be no living organism in that very place. I am warning every traditional ruler, every governor, every senator to understand what I'm saying this night and take it on board. And do not quote me out of context. If you want to be a full and slave, go to the middle belt and join them there. All of you can be slaves to one Nigeria. That is your business. You see the land of Biafra, we cannot surrender to anyone. Now, I don't want anybody to lament. Oh, they have killed us here. Don't stop lamentation. All we need is action. Not Rambo style action. 
If you want to know how Britain ran away from Israel, go and read the book. Just Google it and say, how was it possible that the state of Israel was established despite hostilities from everywhere, surrounded by enemies? But they still succeeded because they blew them out of Palestine or they call, they call it Palestine, which was a name just as they're calling us now, Southeast. They don't want to call us our name Biafra. After the Romans took over the Holy Land, they named it Palestine because they said that the Jews were too stubborn. They erased the name Israel and called the place Palestine. That's what they do. Because when somebody wants to completely overwhelm you, they change your identity for you. And if you're a very stupid black person, as most of us are, of course, in Africa, you swallow your new name, who clan and sinker. Israel was named Palestine by the Romans that came and burnt the temple down because of rebellion, that they were too rebellious. The same thing they tried to do to us. We must be very, very strong. Go and ask them how they did it. They blew them away from there. Not all this rambo on the road. Every road leading into Biafra land will be mined. Everything that is Nigerian, whatever, police or army that steps on our road will blow it to the kingdom come. Very neat and simple. And I will name a cowboy and a rambo. Who don't need that rubbish? We destroy everything destroyable. We need to force them. I said before, when we drive away the Fulani terrorists, Mieti Allah from our bushes, they will bring in their army. We will kill their army. They will start throwing bombs from the air. After that, they will leave us alone. I'm telling you, you mark my words. That's how it's going to happen. Did we, when I told you that we will defeat Mieti Allah, did you believe me? When I said we will drive away Mieti Allah from our land, did you believe me? We did it without the help of any governor, no politician, nobody. This great family, this IPOB, Chineke Gozun, Ndioma, Umu Chineke. We are dying, isn't it? At least we are dying for what we... How about those being killed by Fulani Janjaweed in the Middle Belt? They died for nothing. They're not fighting for anything. They're not fighting for their independence. Nothing. They're just on the farm and they're killed. For you to die in the cause of defending your country, your nation, is the greatest star calling anyone can have in this life. You must understand that. From today, we must stop lamenting on social media and engage ourselves in activities that will slow down the enemy. We know where they're coming from, always from three sides. They'll try to come from Kogi, they will come from Bonyazis, they will come from Enugu, only three sides they can come from. Only, nothing else. We slow them down. We destroy everything destroyable to slow them down so we can kill them. They're not trained in war because they're not patriotic. These are terrorists. What inspires them is some stupid quote in the Quran. What inspires us is the gift that God gave to us. That this land of Biafra is ours. In perpetuity. No one can take it from us. No idiot can. We are in a state of war. Every scientist, everybody must come out now to begin to prepare. We are going to dig our trenches. We are going to amass everything that we have built so far to prepare to repel the invaders. Every DSS office that we know of, every army cantonment or barracks that we know of, will be placed under surveillance and we must begin to deal with them as we lay our hands on them. Because I, uh, before I came on air today, I wanted to apologize to white people. You know, before I used to be very angry about uh, against slavery, against colonialism and all the rest of it. But in a way, today I want to apologize to Europeans and to Americans that enslaved black people. Because I have come to believe that the best thing that ever happened to we black people is slavery and European colonization. It's, it's tongue in cheek, if you understand. It's sarcasm, if some of you can actually absorb it. I, I sometimes I wonder what would have become of us had Europeans not mercifully sold us as slaves, colonized us, or given us limited knowledge with which we are making mouth today, boasting. I went to school. I went to, I went to Harvard. I went to Princeton. Oh, God. 
because I believe very strongly that we black people, we are a disgrace to humanity. Shameful. If with all our education, claims of patriotism and goodness knows what else, we are still being fooled that Buhari is alive, then nobody, no black man deserves freedom. The black race, I believe, as somebody said a while ago, I don't know if it was in a power, I don't know who it was that said that Africa should be colonized again and dominated forever. Maybe they, they have a point. It seems to me that black people are intellectually inferior to every other race in the world. As I tweeted, uh, was it yesterday, without Nigerians, I wouldn't have known how easy it is to fool and deceive black people. Since our brain cannot even interpret what our eyes can see, how is it possible that we can transform our society to serve our needs? It's not possible. If when you see something, you can even interpret what you're, what you're looking at. We are foolish, but old and young. But in Biafra, we're going to redeem ourselves. Because it seems to me that we have eyes, but we cannot see. We lack the capacity to engage the relevant sections of our brain that has to do with critical analysis. That is why Afro American come to and say to you, IPOB is, is a terrorist group. You, as a southern journalist that went to school, a journalist that went to school, you will say, instead of you to ask the government, but <laughs> what did IPOB do for you to outlaw them? When Mietiala is going around about killing, raping, and maiming people, you cannot, you are you outlawed, out proscribed, outlawed. You can't ask questions because you don't have conscience. That part of our brain that has to do with critical thinking and analysis in, a, in black people, I don't think it is working. When you see something that is beautiful, don't you say that thing is beautiful? It, you may not have been to Niagara Falls. You may not have been to, to, to Budukato Ranch. You may not have been to Uguta Lake. You may not have been to, I, I don't know, uh, uh, Otampa River. You may not have been to, but when you see beauty in nature, the first thing you do is to acknowledge it. When you see a handsome man, a beautiful woman, you don't need anybody to tell you that this thing is beautiful. You will say, oh, but this woman is so beautiful. Or, or this television is so pretty. Do you know why? Because your brain automatically identifies anything that is beautiful. That is how human beings are created. You may not have seen that thing before. As one old woman taught me, once your eyes behold something beautiful, your eyes, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Because that part of your brain is still functioning. Which means that everything bright and beautiful, your brain will automatically tell you that that thing is beautiful, isn't it? Anything that is bright and is wonderful, like the rainbow, you say, oh my God, or a sunset in the morning, or sunrise, you say, how beautiful this is, because your brain is telling you it's beautiful. You don't need anybody to tell you. The same thing goes for anything that is ugly. If you can start up and behold something and say, oh, this is so beautiful, you can also rise up and say that this thing is very ugly, it is evil, it is bad. This brings me to the phenomenon of the dead late Buhari and the successful attempt to deceive all of you so far in this zoological republic. Let me leave out the more complex you know, interpretations of the various masked wearers of the Fulani cabal that they periodically bring out to deceive all of you, semi-animals claiming you educated, and focus on the very simple ones that proved to me that black people, especially Nigerians, are lower than wild animals. I cannot compare a wild animal to a Nigerian because that means insulting animals. I'm telling you the truth. And why am I saying this? Because of the case of Buhari, the dead Buhari. I don't know why some of you will stand in front of the mirror and look at yourselves and call yourselves human beings. With the same eyes, you look at the picture or the video, the channel television interview of this little boy with his hands, very fresh hands like that of a 25-year-old. You saw his nose, that the mask tore. The, the part of the nose where the mask should be had cut off from the main nose itself. 
The nose was looking like that of Michael Jackson, a crumbling nose. All of you saw it. You saw his hands. And you're learned, you're educated. You still claim that that thing is Buhari. I don't, I, for the life of me, I, I can't understand. I mean, if you say that that thing in front of channels television is Buhari, may God have mercy upon your soul. That means that everything that Kuru Klaus Klan have been saying about black people is true. That these people are a beast. They, they cannot win. Even when they see the truth, they cannot stand up to say that this is what it, what it should be. I want to know why Nigerians, having seen the hands of this little boy and the nose that is crumbling, you have all seen the obvious flaws in the mask that uh, the Janja weed have given to these boys to wear, you still cannot bring yourselves to ask a simple question. Do you know the person that you saw the other day? Is that little boy called uh, Tatagwe? He's a, he used to be a comedian. He's an evil boy. The, I think he was born and raised in Zaria. You know that boy that used to mimic Buhari? Why haven't you asked yourself, where is that boy? <laughs> Zoological Republic. Why haven't you asked her? that? Type, his name is, I think it's Tabwe, they call him. Why have you not asked yourself, where is that comedian that used to meet with Buhari called Tagwe? Do you know what they did to him? They took him to Asarok. They gave a Fulani girl to him, converted him to Islam. So you don't know? Of course. So any pop, because they know that Yusuf Abuka Muhammad is useless, cannot speak. Once in a while, they bring Tagwe to come out. That is why his English, he cannot hide the flawlessness of his, of his English. Are you listening to me? Have you ever wondered why Nigerians, having seen the hole in the neck of somebody they refer to as their president, still failed to ask the question, Mr. President, how did you develop this hole in your neck? If you go to Guardian newspaper archives, if you go to Punch newspaper archives, if you go to all the, they have it. You can see a man with a hole in his neck. You know, when I, I ponder all these things, I, I keep, when I pray, I keep asking God, <laughs> are you, were black people in your plans when you were making man or did something go wrong somewhere? Somebody that did not have a hole in his neck Yesterday, all of a sudden, one morning, developed a, a hole in his neck. And the people that claim they are his citizens or whatever cannot even ask, but what is this hole doing? On you? Did, you, did you have any surgery or were you breathing from your neck and they failed to close it? And these are people that want good roads and electricity and good governance. In any system that claims to have regard for the well-being of the people, such an obvious defect in the appearance of their so-called number one citizen should have attracted a lot of attention. Anywhere in the world, can you see Biden? Only that Biden fell down climbing the steps of Air Force One. It was everywhere. Can you imagine Biden coming out tomorrow at the Rose Garden of the White House with a hole in his neck? What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen? Black people, this UG, black. Why can't you ask yourself this simple question? What caused that hole in his neck? Uh, if you're telling us that this man is 82 years old, how come his hands looks as fresh as that of my grandchild? Simple questions, but you can't answer them or you can't even ask them to start with. That is what makes you a black person. And that is the difference between you and the white people. You see, in all those countries where they have 24 hours of electricity, where there is running water, where there is free health care, free housing, if you present somebody like this claiming is Buhari, they will ask questions in public. That is the difference between white and black people. And that is why they are still controlling us till this very day. You know, sometimes it is easy to the easy, I should say, to deceive people than to educate them. Especially those who have been enslaved and deceived. 
That's why so many people don't want to learn about the evil that is going on in Asarok. Even when you see it, you don't want to say, oh, bring 2023. Let 2023 come so another person can go in. Typical black people. And you keep wondering why you are poor. You keep wondering why God has abandoned all of you. You keep wondering why you have no good roads. You keep wondering why you go out and the army will kill you and nobody will talk. You keep wondering why you'll be in your home and the police will come and kill everybody and nobody will talk. There is a picture that is in circulation. I tweeted it. Please go to my Twitter um, um, handle or page and see it. I tweeted a picture that was released by Channels Television, not from me, Channels TV. In fact, God so kind, there is a video. I want everybody to pay attention to the masked, crumbling nose and young, fresh hands of this latest version of an 82-year-old dead Buhari. An 82-year-old man looking so young and so fresh now, the question any sensible person will ask is this. Anywhere in the world, I believe even white people will ask is this. If such transformation that so-called Buhari went through that turned him from 82 years to now 33 years, if it exists, why is it that Bill Gates is not looking like an 18-year-old? Or even Biden, the strongest man in the world, allegedly. Or even Tifnubu. That not only looks old but very very ugly at that don't you think that all of them would have opted for a more youthful appearance to coincide with you know even tinubu from 79 to 69 if it were possible for him to make himself appear young and look 69 he would have done it he would have done it but he cannot do it because who you have in Asorok is not Buhari. Buhari is dead long time ago. Look at his hands. I want any Nigerian to look at the hands of that little boy and tell me that that boy is Buhari. Just look at the hands. And don't take the picture. Because here is Photoshop. Go and play the original channel's television interview and you'll see it. He kept pulling at, the, at the, his nose mask. Now because we lambasted them. Because of the former ear. They're now tying it around his neck. None of you can ask questions. Chai. This UG, one of my greatest regrets in life is being born a black person. Because sometimes I wake up in the morning, I'm thinking to myself, how can I be thinking this way? And there must be other people capable of thinking the way that I'm thinking. How can you say that somebody is Buhari? He cannot put his mask around his ear. He's around his neck. You can see the nose, double fold nose crumbling. You can see this, the mask that I, that thought. Yes, you cannot ask questions. You are there, you, can, you are looking at the fresh hands. The fresh hands. If whatever Buhari went through was possible to make him from, to turn him from being 82 to 33, why didn't Prince Philip do the same thing? Queen Elizabeth of England. Why didn't Queen of England do the same thing for her husband that just died? But because we are Africans. They can deceive if we lay fools and Nigerians, but they cannot survive IPOB. It is we black people that destroyed ourselves with our own hands. Nigeria is a typical example. I will no longer blame any white person. I will not even blame anybody. You see Ku Klux Klan, all these racist groups, I can never blame them anymore. Because one day I was thinking to myself, a white man just can't be racist for the sake of it. Why are they not being racist towards Japanese people? It is now, it is dawning on me that we are the reason why people are racist towards us. Our behavior and our way of thinking. We black people destroyed ourselves with our own hands. These people have made a mockery of their own constitution. If they cannot obey their own laws that says that once the president dies, they say the, the uh, vice or deputy takes over. How do you expect the rest of the animals in the zoo to obey the constitution? Fulani Janjabwid, I'm asking you this question. Fulani Kabal, you have disobeyed the constitution. Buhari died on the 27th day of January 2017. Instead of you to swear Osiban in as the president, you, you kept a mannequin. Moving one idiot from place to place 
That is why there is no live address. They cannot address you live. They cannot do any work about. Nobody can visit them. Nothing. This your GE black people. You are the cause of your own problems. And everything is in your brain. The way you reason, the way you approach issues, the way you analyze issues is the reason why you are poor. That is why it appears as if the whole of the world hates you. They call you nigger, they call you all sorts of names, not because they hate you, but because you hate yourself. The way you reason and the way you behave. We destroyed ourselves with our own hands. Even in Nigeria, the full and that wrote the constitution cannot even obey it. If you demand for DNA tomorrow morning, they will give you restructuring. Those of you asking for it, just ask for the DNA of that idiot. Just come out and say it. And you see they will give you restructuring overnight. They can deceive you people, but not us. A dead man that should have been replaced now has a mask. Anybody can wear that mask with a rumpled nose, tell, shamelessly telling us that he wants to invade the East. And we have uh, agreed on a new measure to invade the East. Somebody who is not a Nigerian. Somebody who is not who you voted for you or you claim you voted for. A little boy of less than 33, 33 years of age. Claiming he's 82. When the world, when they look at that, they say these are idiots. Let us kill, kill all of them. Janjaweed thought by removing the mask from, you know, they, they, they thought by, by, by not anchoring the mask on the ear and putting it around the neck that somehow they will find a way to, to circumnavigate all the mysteries surrounding the death of Buhari. There is a girl I want to ask a question. Of course, anyway, her name is Yusuf. She's Yoruba, but she's Yoruba Muslim. Maybe Yoruba Lauren, those that conquered by Flanagan. That girl on Channels TV called her, is it Mao? Her son of his Yusuf for Makadiga Mama. Yusuf. And there's another Yoruba Fulani journalist. I don't know her name. What's her name again? That used to work for Adeola. That together used to work for Sarah Reporters. Where are they now? Please send that picture to them and ask them. I want people to tweet that very picture, tag these people, and ask them, is this the hand of an 82-year-old man? My good friend and brother, of course, happy birthday to you, uh, Dele Momodu. That said, he is Buhari. People should send that very picture to Dele Momodu and ask him, Dele, is this Buhari that you know? In fact, just, just ask him, is this the hand of a, an 82 year old? Look at your own hand, you are 61. Is your hand as fresh as this one? Because I told people before, you cannot, there's no way you can do plastic surgery on the hand, it will always show. That is why if you're putting on bleaching cream, the first place you'll be exposed are the knuckles of your hands because your hand cannot lie. That's why God placed palm print on your hand. It cannot lie. Akaraka. Do you know that? Do you know people like um, uh, Lawana, the Speaker of the Senate, people like um, Hope, those are the mother, put on people that use bleaching cream, the, uh, the the way you know that a woman or a man is using bleaching cream is by the knuckles, the hand. There's no plus, there's no remedy. You cannot deceive the hand. The, your face can accept bleaching cream, but you see your hand will never accept it. After a while, it will burn. Your knuckles will burn. They cannot perform surgery on the hand to make it look old. Nobody can. The best way to tell somebody's age is by looking at the back of your hand. Once you're over 70, you see wrinkles. You cannot do surgery to remove them. It's impossible. How can somebody who is 82 not have wrinkles? And you say that that person is your president. You say, Mr. President is an Asorok. And you want me to regard you as a human being. How is that possible? When I say it now, you say I'm insulting you. I want people to send that picture to that lady, that girl called Adeola. I don't know. You. It's always you know, about people defending <laughs> Janjaweed. I don't know why. And the one called Maope Yusuf for, for Chinese television. Adeola. Send those pictures to these two Yoruba girls and ask them a simple question. Is this the hand of an 82-year-old man? A very simple question. And this zoo will begin to crumble.
before your eyes. You know, our people don't know how to fight this very battle. They have no idea. Hey, give us the structuring. Who are you begging to give you? So by begging Fulani to give you the structuring, that means that Fulani are the owners of Nigeria. That is something they don't know. We serve, we demand restructuring. Demand it from who? By virtue of you saying that you are demanding for restructuring, it means that you are acknowledging that somebody is holding it. And that person holding it, they are, or should I say, the people holding it, they are the owners of Nigeria. Oh my goodness me. A country that believes that cockroaches can keep a president and commander in chief out of his office locked out for months on end deserves not to exist. You people are the same Nigerians that Abak Yari told you that rats and cockroaches prevented the president from accessing his office upon his return from medical whatever in London. And all of you believed it. Commander in chief of the armed forces being kept away from his office by cockroaches. <laughs> this UG black people. Black people. They say that monkey swallowed bags of money. Snakes. You know, so, seriously, yesterday I was thinking about this, you know. Cockroaches kept the president away from his office. Go and Google it. This is his headline. All of you accepted it. That was when they were changing the biometric on the door because nobody can enter into it. It was built by Babangida. It was basically it was the Mossad that told Babangida to build such bunker so that any military coup is, uh, is futile. You'll be there until help will come from the outside world. So you need, they need to scan your retina and your thumbprints to enter there. When Buhari died, they forgot to cut off his finger, his right thumb, or scan his, or bring back his head to scan his, uh, his retina. That was why they had to destroy it, and it took about three months to do. And during that three months, uh, they, oh, he walked from his village in, in Daura. He, his cockroaches are there. There are too many. A country that cockroaches defeated an army, the presidential guard. Does that country deserve to exist? <laughs> You know, white people go through all these things. And after going through them, they look at you, at you niggas. They look, they'll be wondering, oh, do you know that cockroaches kept their president away from the office? Ay, 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 in this UG. I want me to pull again, no? And I'm, I cannot, God forbid. People are too dumb for me. While I was pondering this show of shame by the Fulani Janja with Caliphate and their partners in crime, the Yoruba media, it dawned on me that God must have made a very serious mistake by creating black people. To refer to black Nigerians as animals would be an insult to the animal kingdom. Just like referring to Nigeria as a zoo is an insult to zoo animals that have 24 hours electricity and running water. Uh, to be honest with you, my dear brothers and sisters, I am tired of the idiocy of black people. I'm tired. Without the coming of the white people, I do not honestly know what would have become of us. In this day and age, cockroach kept your president away from office for three months. <laughs> Somebody's hands is looking like as fresh as in Kewam Nemeka. As, as fresh as in the America's hands. That is how somebody who claims is 82 years and you pull out that claiming, oh, God in heaven. God in heaven. Black people are bad, oh, this UG. Let me even ask you, why do you, let, let me, I want to ask this question. Black people, why do you love evil so much? Why do you support evil? Why can't you wake up one morning and decide to be good and call a spade a spade? I, I just want to know what oh, black people, why? Black people, why are you so much in love with evil? They kill other people's children, you're not moved. Even to ask, under what circumstances are you killing? No, 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 you won't even ask. When white people kill you, 
you start complaining. I don't believe that whites are racist, you know. I don't believe it. It's because of the <laughs> wickedness of black people. We are too wicked. The most wicked race that God ever made. Black. Is that wickedness that blinds you from the truth? That is why you see a little boy on Channel TV. All of you saw the video. The nose, nose was crumbling. He mean you're crumbling. He bent down to pray during the salah. You can see the base of the mask at his back. You can see it. His punishment, oh. I can't question to go but this is punishment, I'm telling you. It's punishment. How can you be, how can I be amongst people who are so foolish? That to ask, so if you don't want to know what the hands of a of an, in fact, from tonight, cut out the hand of that boy from the pictures. Go and Google eighty-two year old hand. Go and publish it everywhere that the world may see. Oh God in heaven! To refer to black. People as Nigerians, in fact, as animals, is insulting the, the animals. And uh, full any hypocrisy is what is going to kill them. Full any hypocrisy is what is going to kill them. Let me tell you, they said they wrote a letter. The mask we are in full any Oh, this, you know, do you know why full any can do whatever they want to do and get away with it? Because all of you, you allow them. You know, when they when they when Buhari died and they brought in Jubril and put a mask on his face and convinced you that he is Buhari, that was the day that Fulani knew that he can take all of you and nothing will happen. If you don't know, let me tell you. That was the day Fulani realized that he can take all of you. Oh my god, nothing will happen to them. Anytime I, I preach about the idiocy of black people. These social media companies that will take offense to it. <laughs> but I'm a black man and we are very, very foolish. The most stupid race ever to walk the face of the earth. De escalate hostilities. Federal government urges Israel and Palestine, full and writing to, to, to themselves. <laughs> Let me read it for you so you will laugh. The federal government of Nigeria has said it is monitoring the unfolding developments with Israel and the state of Palestine. According to a statement by the spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ferdinand Moye, the federal government urged both parties to de-escalate. Oh, you're urging them to de-escalate, but you're sending army to come to the east to kill people. Do you, do you, do you, do you see how foolish we are? They are right. It was cut by a punch. They are favorite paper punch. You know, it's, it's a janja weed. You pro janja weed, you know, newspaper. According to a statement by their spokesman for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ferdinand Moye, the federal government urged them to de-escalate. But in Nigeria, where you are, you are escalating violence and conflict. But you are writing to Israel and Palestine, asking them to de-escalate. Such idiocy. From the zoo. He, they urged the, the two parties to remain committed to the two-state solution and to ensure that all citizens live in peace and dignity. Are you listening? Nigeria advising Israel uh, that they should ensure that all citizens live in peace and unity with dignity. But you're asking us to give you land for Ruga, for Miet Yala. You are, you're telling us that they are your brothers, your misguided brothers, but you're telling Israel a civilized, advanced, blessed country to de-escalate. But in your own land, you are escalating. Anyone, this is your black people, man, in this UG. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> uh, dear me. Let me let me read a paragraph from the letter that will make you laugh if you're in the zoo called Nigeria. Now listen. The letter went on to say the federal government further urges the two parties to remain committed to the two-state solution and in the meantime guarantee the rights of all citizens to live in guarantee the rights. So you people know what the rights of citizens are. Yet the protest is a crime in Nigeria. To say you want self-determination is a crime in Nigeria. But you're advising Israel. Are, are you sure that these people are okay? I, anyway, but they're black people. Why am I disturbing myself? One this Yoji. <laughs> black. <laughs> very, very sad indeed. Can you just imagine these cow brains? 
are they for real? At least in the case of Israel and Palestine conflict this time around, Hamas, we are the people that fired rockets first. Maybe what is happening to black people is now happening to human. Israel was on their own and Hamas started firing rockets at Israel. And Israel had to respond with overwhelming force. Now, despite the fact that Hamas were the first to fire rockets at the side of Israel, the letter from Fulani Janjaweed Caliphate in Asarok is de-escalate. They never blamed Hamas for firing rockets at Israel first. No. And that is not the topic of discussion tonight. It is called context. I want people to contextual. I want you to put into, I told you, so go, go, you but I want people to put into context the case of IPOB and federal government of Nigeria. Hamas fired rockets at Israel. Israel responded. Nigeria said, de-escalate. Please, guarantee the rights of citizens. I now want to ask Nigeria, did IPOB fire anything at you? Did we even fire ordinary catapult at you before you sent your army to come and kill us? A very simple question. If you're asking those exchanging rockets to de-escalate, what did we do to you to warrant Operation Python that's one, two? What happened? What did we do? In the court of law, if, if mankind still has any conscience, they will ask you, but what did IPOB do to you? What physical harm did they bring to you? You say, oh, they're asking for Biafra, but Nigeria must be one. That's our crime. But Hamas fired rockets at Israel. You're pleading for, you're asking for peace, for guarantee of rights of citizens. But we did nothing to you. American Open Google. The world will ask the zoo, but what did they do to you? What did Nam the Kano do to you before you arrested him in 2015? Before you went to Mpoh to massacre people, what was the crimes of those youths? What did they do? Did they fire a rocket at us or rock? The answer is no. Now, when you live in a society that fails to rationalize the rights and the wrongs of what the government of Nigeria is doing to agitate us, then you don't deserve to be called a human being. What did we do? You are asking Hamas to, asking Israel to take it easy on Hamas that fired rockets and killed citizens. Where did we fire rockets at you before you decided to invade our land? With me, Yala. Now you understand, don't you? Now, can anybody tell me can anybody tell me, please, or any mentally unstable Eastern intellectual or Yoruba sophisticated moron tell me which rocket or missile IPOB fired at Hassel Rock before they started killing people in 2015? This is a very simple question begging for answers. Before you condemn IPOB, before you condemn ESM, before you condemn anybody, I want to ask you this simple question. When did we pick up arms against the Nigerian state? When? I'm asking you. If you're honest. So for somebody to hold a view, an opinion, that they want to be free from something, entitles the state to kill that very individual, or individuals, as the case may be. Is that what you're telling me? All of you intellectuals from Ibo land and the sophisticated morons from Yoruba land. It's a simple question. I hold a view that I should not be part of something that a white man created. And you want to kill me for it. I did not fire any rocket at you. I did not pick up any guns to fight you. But you came to kill me because I was holding an opinion you don't agree with.
they must answer this question. The late dead Buhari came into office in 2015. Before that, there was Jonathan. I want you to understand this very clearly. That is to let all the intellectuals and the idiots from the South understand what I'm saying very clearly. Before, before Buhari, there was Jonathan. During the reign, I call it the reign because uh, people who rule you in the zoo is not a democracy. During the reign of Jonathan, there was IPOB. But Jonathan never made it a state policy to kill IPOB agitators. People must also bear in mind that before Jonathan came, there was Obasanjo. Yes, Obasanjo was a mass murderer. He's a killer. Obasanjo is a killer. He should be hanged. Obasanjo is a mass murderer. You've forgotten Odi, haven't you? Others may forget, but we can't forget. Who was responsible for the Odi massacre of Obasanjo? Zaki Biam of Obasanjo. Murderer. Mass murderer he is. Even during the war, he was a mass murderer, pretend mass killer, because he's a, because he's a, he's a more, he's a spy for Western intelligence agencies. That's why he's still alive, because he's a spy for them. These are the people that betrayed Africa. Obasanjo were one of those that betrayed Africa to the core. A spy. When he's talking, you think he loves Africa. Rubbish. Ask him how many agencies around the world is he informant for. Udi Massacre, Obasanjo. Zaki Biambo, Obasanjo. He killed people, but at least he, well, he didn't go. Like, he killed Masop members as well. But he was not as senselessly brutal as the late dead Buhari. Obasanjo was a mass murderer. Obasanjo killed people in the Middle Belt. He killed people from Biafra land. Udi. But let me tell you something that will shock you tonight. The same thing IPOB was asking for was what the North asked for in Sharia. They agitated for Sharia. And Obasanjo agreed to grant them Sharia across 12 states of the North. Is it 13? I don't know. Nobody killed them for it. This same Fulani asking you not to talk about restructuring or banning Fulani headsmen from coming to the South. They had an issue of national concern to them being their own Sharia. They wanted Sharia law in the North. And it was given to them. There was no legislation in the Federal House of Assembly, be it uh, Senate or House of Reps. Nobody told the Alekalis of the North or the Sultan of Sokoto, please go to National Assembly and discuss Sharia. Or Basan judge just appraised and gave them Sharia without any fanfare. No fanfare. Are you listening to me? I want to unmask the hypocrisy of the Fulani Janjaweed Caliphates because they're hypocrites. I want to ask all of them, those of them talking, I say, oh, hi, but you, you should have consulted. Go to National Assembly. When they gave you Sharia under Obasan job, did you go to National Assembly? A very simple question. You are begging them for restructuring. When they restructured Nigeria, did they beg you? They went to Obasanjo and said, if you don't do this, we'll start. Obasanjo gave them immediately. You have been debating restructuring for how many years? Do you know that God is wonderful? They cannot give you restructuring because that was the same thing that Ujuku went to Aburi and agreed and you said, no. Now you want it. Are you following me? When the Fulani wanted, to, because it is effective restructuring, Nigeria oppressed, uh, oppressed two systems, one Sharia, one common law, should I say, um, 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 secular law. When Fulani wanted Sharia, as the South is now calling, some of them are calling for their restructuring. Fulani, did you go to National Assembly for laws to be made or passed granting you Sharia? It was an executive fiat by Obasanjo. And he granted you your Janjaweed Caliphate in the North. Now tell me, 
Did anybody kill you when you were agitating for Sharia? It's a simple question I want to ask uh, uh, the bandit negotiator, Sheikh Gumi. All of you Fulani people, did anybody shoot at you when you were asking for Sharia? When you went on radios across the north spewing your rubbish about Sharia and Islam, did anybody arrest you? You were effectively dividing Nigeria into two. One Muslim caliphate and one secular state from the middle belt down. Did anybody disturb you? Were you arrested? Were you killed? I have all the laws of nature is on our side. We've done nothing wrong to you people. What you asked for and Obasanjo gave you is what we're asking for and you're killing us. And you want me to remain in that same country. I think that you are grossly, grossly mistaken. Obasanjo was a mass murderer. He was the one that gave them Sharia. But in the South, he was killing my sub-members. It was Buhari who said, Inshallah, that they will make sure that Sharia is implemented across the whole of Nigeria. In fact, no, let me be fair to him, across the whole of the North. Go and look. He was on a radio in the North, in Kaduna somewhere. People, uh, you know, we are great researchers in IPOB. Go and research it. Bring out that very clip. Nobody killed him. Nobody shot him. Can you imagine somebody rising up and saying that we want Christian laws in the South? <laughs> DSS will take the, both the man, the woman, the, the family, they will even take the chicken from inside the chicken shed. But the late dead Buhari said it, and nothing happened because now that is confirmation that the Fulani owns all oh, these people from the South saying our country in Nigeria, you people are foolish. Fulani owns, they believe they own. Do you hear how's there anymore? When glass did you hear how's that Fulani? <laughs> Zoological Republic. When last did you hear how's that? It's not only Fulani now. Because go go the Fulani, hey, go go house, I will have the houses underneath their feet. And that is one thing that Katrina Lang, with the help of Ojo Zokalo in the East and the Tinubu in the West, is hoping to help them achieve. But they can never succeed. Never. I asked a question here, which I expect newspapers and columnists to write about tomorrow and next tomorrow. When the North were agitating for Sharia, did anybody shoot them or arrest them or castigate them? Nobody, no, no film from the South. Nobody. How dare you? Who are you? Nigeria is theirs. Now you're asking for ordinary restructuring and they have come out with all guns blazing. They want to tag ESN terror group because we defeated their own terrorist group. Then they have now brought the army. The army we are going to defeat and they will bring the air force and we'll bring them down. And then after that, they will say, come, let's negotiate. That's how, it's always, how, it, <laughs> that's how it goes all over the world. You think they're going to conquer us? This is not possible. You are, you're about to see a movie. Miracle. Because I asked Elohim, are you in heaven? Or some nia nia. I said, are you God? Are you in heaven? God said, I'm in heaven. Proceeding over the affairs of men on earth. I said that that time has come. You are going to prove to the whole world that you are the God of these people. This, this your children. Because one day we are going to die and pass away, but your words will remain forever and ever. The time has come for you to prove to mankind that you are God of these people. This people name do much in You is about time you prove that you are their God. I'll try to build a picture for people to understand that by virtue of the statement made by Buhari when he was alive, that they want to spread Sharia all over the north. That um, Fulani, British backed satanic caliphate, set out from the beginning to deceive, divide, and conquer indigenous populations in the zoo called Nigeria. That's their game plan, and they will never stop. Fulani will conquer all of you unless you join IPOB now to put up a resistance. Time has gone for Toko. We are now digging trenches. We need to stop them. They have come. We must stop them. And we are going to show the whole world now, very shortly, <laughs> the music, the reggae. <laughs>
We'll start dancing it soon. You know, I'm warning you in advance. You know, our people, we are Republicans. You need to inform them of anything that you're going to do. So that way you can carry them along. I'm just informing them tonight. If you think I will allow Fulani to conquer our land, then you're dreaming. It won't happen. It won't happen, no. No, it's not going to happen. And I say, oh, but you, you don't need to fight a war inside. Fight that. No, 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 no. God said we should allow them to come in. Because it's going to destroy the Flannery Caliphate completely and totally. But the main bulk, the main thrust of their army is going to come to the east and we're going to kill them in the east. Hagan Weber and that's where they're going to die. Because we are going to compel them to fight every inch of the way, every inch of land they advance, they're going to die. After this, all of you will praise God in heaven. Not all this idol. Let us assume for one single second, in the case of this conflict, that violence begat violence. What violence did IPOB unleash on Nigeria that warranted Nigeria to, to, to be slaughtering, maiming, kidnapping, and raping people till this very day? I want the world to understand war massacre. MNA massacre, Igwocha Trump rally massacre, National High School Aba massacre, Isiama Faruku in my own house massacre. I want to ask everybody who is listening, what was our crime when all these massacres were happening? What did we do wrong? I'm sure you can't answer, can you? You can never ever answer. Because our, I can, our hands are clean. You know that. That is why we are undefeatable. We are the only people the zoo are afraid of. It's only IPOB led by Mazen Nam that can no adapt. No, all that's irrelevant. And that's the truth. You know me, I speak the truth. I don't care how people feel. It's only us they're afraid of. That is why anything associated with IPOB, terrorism, terrorism, terrorism. And the, the, the media, the journalists, they are telling to write this junk. Cannot even ask them, but uh, what are Fulani bandits? Are they missionaries? We are terrorists because we, def we stop them from taking over our land. That is why we are terrorists. <laughs> to tell you the arrogant, I'm, 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 allow me to preach. It becomes Yosi Chinekasim's unit, please. Allow me to preach. I must preach this very gospel. To tell you the brazen arrogance of the Janjaweed Caliphate. Do you know what the president of the Senate said, Ahmed Lawan? Elected officials should not be leading any agitation. Well, the second in command, the, 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 the Afonja, Bajabi Amila, he was a Muslim changed to Christian change back again to Islam. Bajabi Amila, whatever the idiot's name is. He, he said agitation may be genuine, but <laughs> you know them. <laughs> allocation. I have Flanny. Flanny is holding them with their own simple allocation. Their own money. Flanny is giving to them two, three million every month. They are brain. That's what matters to them. Not the welfare of their own people. <laughs> the president of the Senate, Flanny Janja with Ahmed Lawan, said elected officials shouldn't be leading this agitation. What is the agitation? No. Just simple restructuring, not even to divide. And now, let me shock all of you. <laughs> Do you remember during NSARS? I want to speak very slowly so people can understand me very well. Do you remember during NSARS? This same idiot kept saying, channel your grievances through your, we are in a democracy. Channel your grievances through your elected officials. Have you all forgotten? Nigerians, of course you have forgotten. After all, you, you, you are in the zoo, in the zoo. Do you remember when they said to us, go, even Buhari, when he was alive, Buhari said, let, if they are agitating, we have elected officials, let them go through the elected officials. The same people that said go to elected, they, they have come back today to say your elected officials should not be leading agitation. 
are these the type of people you want to stay in the same country with? They don't, they don't even know what they're doing. You said to us, channel your agitation through your uh, elected officials. Now, they sat in Asaba and said, which I don't even support, I don't even believe in this stupid restructuring. They sat in Asaba and they discussed restructuring. You're coming back to say, the same Ahmed Lawan in the newspaper, the same Ahmed Lawan in the newspaper said, he said, according to Vanguard newspaper, Lawan knocks southern governors over call for restructuring. Why? Says elected officials should not be leading agitation. But you are the same idiot that said that you should channel all your grievances through your electoral. That that's how to do it in democracy. In a democracy, you go through your elected representatives. Now they met in Asaba to reflect the views, of, so they said, of their people. And you're saying they are wrong. Now I want to ask him, if the governor should not be leading the agitation, who should? I, I, I take it by default, it should be ordinary people. Is that not what IPOB is doing and you're killing us? This is to let you understand that fallen is they believe they own Nigeria. They can do anything. They can say anything. Nobody will arrest them. Nobody will touch them. And the, the most difficult and painful part is that all of you shouting one Nigeria from the south, you are the cause of this problem. Like Ihana Cho and Dindidi, take up a kind of under carrying zoo flag running all over the place like a bunch of idiots. People, no wonder uh, uh, we are so easily colonized. I say, and they will, they will, they will suffer for it. So, the same people that said, channel your grievances through your elected representatives are the same people complaining that those elect, the same people that was elected, the governors, should not be agitating for something that they claim their population is asking for. I now want to ask all of you from the South, with this type of brain, reasoning, understanding, being exhibited by the full army, this is a whole president of the Senate. How can you be in the same country with such a person? I'm asking you a simple question. Hey, a man that I respect very much, I didn't mention his name before, of course, Professor Kinto, a man I have immense love and regard for. A man I have immense love and regard for. All these stupid, stupid people. Uh, so foolish. Zoo flag, not even ashamed of yourselves. You will see how disgrace will come upon you because you have brought curse upon yourself. Full of people brainwashed to think Nigeria belongs to them. Professor Akintoye, a man that I respect and I love immensely. Professor Banji Akintoye on Wednesday disclosed that he is fighting for the actualization of the independence of the Yoruba nation. Akintoye went on to say that. Uh, Full and people have been brainwashed to think that Nigeria belongs to them. No. It is your brother Tinubu who is making them to feel Nigeria belongs to them. It is the last of all Joseph Carlo that gave the full and the impetus to think Nigeria belongs to them. Your average Nigerian from the south is the idiot that makes the full and to think that Nigeria belongs to them. These are some of the things that you must bear in mind. These are some of the things that you must know. Uh, my dear uncle, Professor Akintoye, the fault is not with the Fulani. The fault lies with those from the Middle Belt and from the South who for years, through maybe through a bizarre combination of foolishness and what I call monumental buffoonery, and despite their so-called education, they think they can share a country with a group of wandering vandals with a conquistado mentality. Let me try and break it down. You cannot be in the same country with a people who are nomads with a mentality to conquer you. Therefore, anybody, any day you are shouting one Nigeria, one Nigeria, believe you me, you are preparing yourself for conquest. Because Nigeria belongs to the Fulani people. One idiot is saying, I should leave, you know, in this UG black, leave football and focus on. And I tweeted before I came on air, have you not seen Gerard PK before? Go to my tweet and say it. I tweeted it there. Now, nah, and this UG useless idiots. If you have any brain, will you be in the zoo? You are trying to advise me.
as you leave football, I say, you can't see how foolish they are. How foolish they are. Do you see Pep Guardiola is the best man football manager in the whole world? He believes in Catalonia. Go and say it. You know, General PK, over 103 caps for Spain. He has won the World Cup European Championships. You understand that very well? Countless European Cups and countless La Liga titles. Is he, is he a job close to PK in terms of ranking and status? You cannot see PK with Catalonia flag. You, you idiots. Black monkeys from everywhere. This UG trying to advise uh, advise me. I shouldn't talk about footballers. Who, who told you that? You should change his name to, to uh, Abdul Mumumi uh, Katangora. Maybe I'll leave him alone. You answer Yana, you answer Didi. You're a Biafran, idiots. If you're trying to ad advise, let me move, Coco. Where you are, do you have light? You're trying to adv advise somebody that has 24 hours electricity. Go and uh, fetch water from the borehole and drink and suffer from typhoid in two weeks' time. Okay, go. They leave footballers alone. Nara. That was how you leave people alone. People were killed at the ball. Leave them alone. Kill at the Leave them alone. Black people. Leave them alone. This UG. Dr. Nandazigiwe studied history. So he must have known what the Fulanis had in store for everybody. He, all of you, if you read history, I'm sure that Professor Banji Akinto is, 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 a, is a professor of history, so he must know. He must understand. Leave <laughs> footballers alone. I forgot. <laughs> Black. DCOG. Black people. Sometimes I hate black, so I'm, I'm being honest with you. Hey, there, there's a way the reason you just want to slaughter all of them. Telling him this, you are a useless set of people. Cannot reason properly. Black. Leave footballers alone. Leave them alone. No? You cannot see General PK with Catalonia flag. You moron. I think he was studied history, but he did nothing with it. He was aware of the fact that fallen people used Hausa informants and insiders to defeat Hausa people. And any Nigerian who is aware of this very fact can never support one Nigerian. Any day, forget about everything, forget your hatred for freedom and everything. I want every intellectual, I want every sophisticated moron in the zoo. Simply study Hausa, forget about everything else. Hate me all you like. Intellectual, go and study what happened to Hausa people because it is going to happen to you. As simple as that. Now, let me tell you one thing that you don't know. It was only two days, two or three days ago, I was reminiscing and researching and thinking, and I kept asking myself, that's uh, Chief Awolo who was a learned man. Apart from me, Awolo was a learned man. Why did he reject Biafra and Ujuku and everything, even including Aburi? <laughs> then something occurred to me. That Chief Obafemi Awolowo realized what the Fulani Janjaweed Caliphate were up to. That was why he spent many years trying to convince Namdi Azikiwe to join him to secure the South. When Azikiwe said no, I will always say to hell with you. I will went to the Yoruba land to secure his people. So some of you may be asking, but how did I draw this such a conclusion that may be at odds with um, contemporary thinking about Awolowo's legacy? Let me answer you this question. But for me, Awolowo was not a tribalist. He was a realist. Ahmad Bello who is a direct descendant of the conquerors from Putajalon, was the real tribalist. Dr. Azikiwe was just a mere dreamer, you know, like a grasshopper jumping from place to place in the summer. So during the winter, it failed to store enough food. It died and the ants came and picked it up and, and ate it. Azikiwe was a dreamer. 
When I would try and fail to convince him that the South should break away from the North and mind their own business, <laughs> as he said, no, I will left him and said, let me now devote my time and my love for my own people. So what we are doing today, in essence, I will know was the forerunner of it. Go and take care of your own people. And that is what Professor Banji Akintoye, what I believe Are Gani Adams, Sunday Boho, and all the rest are doing today. And I commend them. I commend them and I commend them. They should continue. Look at how we are all hailing the get together of the Southern governors. Imagine if Awolowo and Azikiwe ever got together. Do you think we'll be in this mess today? Ordinary meeting you know, called by a flavors and the slaves of the ginger weed. And we everybody is, is rejoicing. Imagine if Awo and Zeke had worked together. Hey, my goodness. What a country, Zoological Republic. Now, let me tell you their game plan. I'm, please bear with me, I'm, I'm preaching. Let me tell you their game plan. That was why I was against the states. State formation in Nigeria, I told you this from day one. Because when they create a state, they take away your identity. You are nobody anymore. You are the mercy of the Janjaweed Caliphate. And surprise, surprise, the same idiot called Ahmed Lawan, the president of the Senate of the Zoo, he said he is against restructuring. Why? Because the restructuring will go back to the regions and they don't want it. Is it clear now? Is it in a punch again? The president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has faulted calls for restructuring by southern governors. I believe that as leaders, especially those of us who are elected into office, should not be at the forefront of calling for this type of thing, restructuring. Why? Because it will start a regional campaign. It should be state-based. Go and agitate for your state. Not Biafra region or Eastern region, not Western region, not Midwest, if the, for those who want that rubbish, not for Middle Belt. No, it shouldn't be regional. It should be by state. Do you know why they want it by state? So they can send their DSS director to your state. They send their police commissioner to your state from Fulani land. They decide what happens, who lives and who dies. But if we go back to regions, they cannot do it. Because every region will be autonomous. Is it very clear to you now? So all of you monkeys clamoring for extra state, state creation, you are fools. You don't know nothing. You know nothing. Your brains are empty. Do you know how they started creating states in the zoo? Was to divide you. That is why I said that, you know, we black people, we have no sense of perspective. We never go back. How did states manage to uh, arise in Nigeria? It is to make you submissive to the, to the dictates of the Janjaweed Caliphate. Cross River, Ogoja, and River State. Go on, said, I am creating these states to spite Ojuku and to kill off Biafra. Today, I'm from Rivers. I'm, I'm Rivers, man. <laughs> Rivers, man. Papi water. Papi water. And we are coming for. He said, Nobody can. I'm not going to kill you before your time. I'm not going to... You'll see what will happen to you. You'll see what will happen to you. I get people, you see. You will see what will happen to you. The same people that said military offensive against Boko Haram is anti not The same people. The same people. This day, newspaper publication, 3rd of June, 2013. Buhari said so. <laughs> you see, the Fulanis are not as confused as some of you think. They are well focused on getting the country Islamized. They are deceiving the southern Fulifus and the intellectuals. They are deceiving the subsequent morons from the Middle Belt and also from the West using different tactics. But those who honestly calculate, if you calculate their game plan very well, you will know that their end game is total Islamization, total Fulanization. The people are finished. Save this very broadcast 
so that when it happens, the whole world will know. This is Tambua, Papi Water. Make it mild. The world will hear your story. And when it happens, people must remember that we can went to be one killed its people, the other day. <laughs> and we are in this, our people must be very vigilant. We're in a state of war. If you're drinking and moving about and doing uh, being single, putting your jeans around your 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 buttocks and walking up and down, you are risking your life. Do not move about alone. We are in a state of war. But of course, some of you are black people and you will not listen until it happens. Then you start complaining. I don't want all these lamentations on Facebook. I don't want social media. I don't want that rubbish anymore. If you see them abducting people, go and kill them. Stop them. Not this stupid lamentation all the time. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick. I only wrote one letter this year to Biden to stop them from selling arms to the zoo and they ran to China. They're in Shanghai now purchasing weapons to come and Islamize you. They want to remove, they, you know, they are flying this kite now that uh, Buhari has dementia and health problems. You know, he has dementia. <laughs> He's not going anywhere, he must be exposed. I know what they're planning to do. <laughs> They want to maybe put Oshibajo there and say, Dear Buhari, that fresh boy has dementia. <laughs> when he was speaking on channels, did he have sound as if he had dementia? Not at all. That war they're bringing to the East is going to happen. And when the war happens, the world will call him for a meeting. And uh, I trust the Western world. They will put on a uh, heater so that that mask will melt on his face. Or oh, what was it? This is wax, it will melt on his face. And then the shame of the zoo will become public. They said somebody kicked against um, uh, the southern uh, governors, uh, their meeting, calling for restructuring. We are against it. Northern leaders are not happy with governors from the southern part of the country. But I'll ask them once again, when you are agitating for your Sharia law, did anybody from the south talk? It was a southern man, so to speak, or person that gave you Sharia. Do you see how hypocritical you people are? And one, I think even one of them had the temerity to go live on air to talk rubbish. That is why I am warning you about journalists. You people are making life worse for the ordinary people. You're about journalists. You must try as much as possible to be objective and try to write the truth at all times. I think it was, it was Malcolm X that said, if you're not careful, the, the newspapers will have you hating the people you are, who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. That was what they did for many years. Deceived the Yoruba youth. That IPAB was against Yoruba people. Now the Kano is against Yoruba. He's anti Yoruba. He's this. When it's a lie. It is the same IPOB fighting for you. Now they have realized that people was fighting for them. Yoruba newspapers, please. Please, please. That is the reason why I was very, very bitter and upset the way they covered the arrest of one 60-year-old man. And you know, in Nigeria, they love to reduce the age. They arrested one man, they called as a woman that came to my house to take pictures with me. They reduced his age from 60 to 48. So I'm now older than a woman. <laughs> He was a father and soon to be grandfather. He was arrested in Abia State where he sought refuge after he, this same army destroyed his house in his village. They gave him a fake title Deputy ESN Commander. <laughs> oh my God. And like Itinubu, they reduced his age from 60 to. That's what is That is the new craze in Nigeria, adoption of age, football age. They reduced his age from 60 to 48. Poor man, I feel sorry for him. This is now the new trend, age reduction. The Flanagan Jewish criminals that run the affairs of the zoo called Nigeria think that the best place to always start is through lies and age falsification. The late dead Buhari, who is almost 90 years of age, is only 76. Bola Tinubu, who is 79, is now 69, which means he gave birth to his daughter at the age of nine. Zoological Republic, people without shame, this UG, black people, that is why we are poor. Very, very backwards, retrogressive. Our thinking is poor, very, very rich, and I'm telling you the truth. They captured the 60 years. Because they know if they mention his real age, 
People will say, but how can a 60-year-old man be a commander in the field? They said he's 48. <laughs> Our room's first child is almost, is almost 40. <laughs> oh, God in heaven. They think if they do it, it will pain us. Arrest as many as you like. Kill as many as you like. We are going to arrest you, and we're also going to kill you back. Be rest assured. That time I get on you want, you're going to have it. Simple as that. What I find not only ridiculous but astonishing is that establishment newspapers in Nigeria and media houses still living in the bygone era of full and domination of Yoruba land. Like some of the journalists are still doing their best to support, to support the agenda with masters. Always doing their best to support the flan. I don't know why they do it. Nobody investigated who Awurum is. Even the Fulanized BBC we could not ask who is Awurum, how old is he, where is he from? How can he be yes and deputy commander? If you take pictures with me now, you are a target, please be very careful. I've asked all of you, destroy your old phones. All officers, you must move house. Change your number, change, throw away your phones, please, and bury them. Change your number, mind those you talk to because we're in a state of war. It's not going to kill you because Biafra is at hand. It is not going to kill you to be incommunicado, to go underground. We are in a war. All able bodied men should go into the bush and stop the advance of this army, or else they will kill you. If you're in the township, they will arrest you, they will abduct you. Of course, you will not listen. Children of this age, they don't listen anymore. Uh, they say, Amen. This is from Poncho. Oh, God. I'm a NAB suspected IPOB leader and everybody's IPOB leader. Everything is IPOB leader. Punch is a European newspaper. Punch is in Lagos. And inside Lagos, is all the bushes around Lagos, you have Al Shabaab in it. So this Punch newspaper, they think that when they come, they'll say, oh, they will be supporting the Fulani. We support the Islamization of Nigeria. They will leave you and you go scot free. They will also behead you. I must ask Yoruba journalists not to be evil, please. You people are the ones encouraging the Fulani Janjaweed. Yoruba journalists, you people are the ones encouraging the Fulani takeover of Nigeria. Let me read one thing that Temi Tokwe Akintola said. He said, one thing I find quite strange and annoying, and annoying is this. How did Nam the Kano predict clearly what this government would look like? Yet our many prophets cannot. Because I was sent by heaven itself. Everything I tell you is gospel. We are whiter than white and whiter than snow. Anything I tell you is gospel from heaven. Let me play for you the unbridled, annoying arrogance of the Fulani Janja with Caliphate. That you may understand, all of you. That you may understand. Because most of you don't quite understand. Some of you don't actually know what is going on. You have no idea what is happening. That is why <laughs> Fulani is playing with you. Let me play for you what one Fulani man said. And my response to him is always the same. Always the same. How come when the people were agitating, <clears throat> excuse me, for Sharia in the North, nobody from the South intervened? How come now that the South are saying they want something and all of you from the North are jumping up and down? Listen. Ask all those, whatever, 13, 15 governors that met in that hotel. Mm -hmm. Was there any of the Fulani leaders consulted? They didn't consult Fulani leaders. Any mm -hmm. of the Fulani leaders consulted? Are you listening? The full animal is so talking. They're there making laws for people that mm -hmm. they have not consulted. <laughs> There's a problem with government disconnected, out of touch with realities of people. Mm -hmm. You must sit down and talk with people you are making laws for. Okay. None of that go those governors have sat down with full animal leaders in wherever they are and tell them what we are planning to do or what we're going to do. Or are you listening? Are there. <laughs> And then they are sitting down there and making laws. All right. Be careful. Be careful. I'll play it for you again so you understand. I'm playing this thing for Yoruba journalists. I'm playing this for Igbo Efulefus. I'm playing this thing for intellectuals. I'm playing it for all the sophisticated idiots from right across the zoo. Everybody carrying green, white, green flag. I want, this man is telling you how foolish you are. 
he was complaining that the southern governors met in Asaba and decided to ban open grazing, that the Fulanis were not there. That all of you making laws for the East. Is there any Easterner who is part of your security architecture? It's a simple question which nobody can answer. Let me play it again for uh, Punch. Are you listening? Punch this by all these uh, idiotic uh, Fulanis supporting papers in the zoo. All those useless, idiotic journalists. Are you listening? I want to play it for you. You are the ones encouraging these idiots from the Fragelon Mountains. You are the ones encouraging Fulani to take over our land. I want you to listen and listen very carefully. Listen. Is that uh, the Gandhi said, whatever you do for me without me is against me. Ask all those, whatever, 13, 15 governors that met in that hotel. Was there any of the Fulani leaders consulted? <laughs> Any other Fulani leaders consulted? So they are there Southern making meeting. laws for people that they have not consulted. <laughs> There's a problem with government disconnected, out of touch with realities of people. You must sit down and talk with people you are making laws for. Like IPOB. <laughs> None of that gov those governors have sat down with Fulani leaders in wherever they are and tell them what we are planning to do. Or what we're going to do, or what alternatives are there. Oh. And then they're sitting down there and making laws. All right. Be careful. Uh, Be careful. Uh, he won the useless, idiotic journalist. Be careful. And the idiot is calling him Sayesa. <laughs> the zoo president, whoever is wearing the mask, had a National Security Council meeting without a single person from the East present and they took decisions to deploy the army to the east. That is how foolish foreign people are, very jaundiced and selective memory. That's what they have. What does this man mean anyway? Hmm. He was asking, are there any foreign leaders among the southern governors meeting? How many meetings have foreign leaders held before? With certain as in it, show me one. These guys are something else, so I'm telling you. Anyway, I don't blame him. I blame all the Southern leaders and politicians, all these idiots, intellectuals, writing garbage all the time. Go on with your shameless arrogance, follow me. Oh, dear me. Only a few days ago, in Asorok, uh, uh, Yusuf Abaka Mohammed, uh, masquerading as Buhari, had a national security meeting, mainly for South and South South, yet no single person from the region was in that meeting. Yeah, the meeting was uh, for the same region security. And let me remind this Fulani Janjaweed man what he doesn't know. At that national security meeting that was held, uh, Usibanjo was there, uh, Yusuf Abaka Mohammed was there, wearing Buhari face, the face mask. Boss Mustafa was there. Lucky Iraba was there. Lucky Iraba is the Muslim. He's married to a Fulani woman. He's not Yubo. People should stop talking rubbish. Ibrahim Gambari was there. Baba Ghana Monguno was there, Abubakar Malami was there, Bashir Salih Gumagashi was there, Ibrahim Atahiru was there, Awal Zubairu was there, Usman Al Kali Baba was there, Yusuf Magaji Bichi was there, Ahmed Rufai Abubakar was there. Not even a single decent Yoruba man is there, it's only Shibajo. They gathered to address insecurity in the Southeast, yet no Southeasterner was present in that meeting. That meeting was not a solution to the zoo's problem. Rather, it was a meeting to consolidate the nepotism, tribalism, and cronyism of the Flanagan and Jawood Caliphate. As one man said, Abiola, you cannot shave a man's head in his absence. As he was trying to say, that Gandhi said, any laws or decisions you take without me present is against me. But you sat, you decided to deploy troops to the east, to the southeast. Let me use the southeast in this instance. And there was no South Eastern in that very meeting. The same, the same Fulana Janjaweed is talking today. That is who they are. And their newspaper, their trumpet, which is um, Daily Trust, have spoken. Ndume tackle South governors for rejecting open ban grazing. Because I told you they planned all these things. Oh, I wish the South can understand. But it's too late now, maybe. They need to take all of you over. And that is where the zoo must fall. Their, their, their mouthpiece is Daily Trust. Have you ever seen or read from Daily Trust 
uh, you know, anything antagonistic towards the Janja with Caliphate, they're there to defend them. The same thing with premium times. That's what they do. It's only in the South people try to, uh, their own stupid objectivism is to try to promote full and domination of their own land. Such idiocy, such foolishness. What I want to reiterate tonight for the whole world to understand is that the federal government of Nigeria, under whoever is wearing their mask, under this APC bandit government, is the father of terrorism. So it is quite laughable that they said they're prosecuting those who are sponsoring terrorism. Now, do you know what Arewa said? Those asking for restructuring want Nigeria to disintegrate. But when you wanted Sharia, you did not want Nigeria to disintegrate. I don't blame you. I blame all the idiots from the South, their governors, their politicians, all the fools who cannot stand up to support IPOB and ESN to confront the Fulani Janjaweed. Those are the people that I blame. I don't blame the Fulani in one bit. And I thank you all for listening this very evening and I must make it very, very clear, please. Every frontline officer must go on the ground. I'm also announcing for the benefit of what we are doing on the ground, please, every frontline officer must move from where they are. Dislocate and stop communicating with people unless they are the hierarchy. Nobody should have your number. I have said this thing so many times that some of you do not, I don't know what is wrong with you. You see, every phone you should have must have signal on it. Even if you're using WhatsApp, it cannot be the same number as to the number you, that is inside your phone. Only make calls using social media applications. Therefore, the SIM card inside your phone should only be for data purposes. The number for your WhatsApp must be different. There are IPOB families all over the world. I'm asking them this night or asking them morning, depending on whether make many numbers available so that people can activate their social media platforms, be it Signal, be it um, Telegram, with foreign numbers, not numbers of the zoo. Everybody outside, a family member of this noble IPOB, get as many lines as possible. Give it to people. Let somebody back home, you put in a new SIM card in a new phone. Don't give the number to anybody. Now you now call an IPOB family member abroad who will now activate. You now download any app you want, be it WhatsApp, be it whatever. Download it, signal, download it on your phone. They will ask you for your telephone number. Give them that number abroad. That very family member will be with that very phone. So when they ask you, put in the code, we've sent a code to your number. That very person will tell you the code, you put it in your phone, and your social media platform is activated. Do not use zoo numbers. Do not use numbers from Nigeria to go into WhatsApp, to go into... Don't even let anybody have your number. If, if somebody wants to call you, tell them to call you on Signal. If they cannot call you on Signal, tell them to keep trying until they get network. I'm telling you the truth. That will save your life. All these abductions will stop. People get abducted because they are holding on to their old numbers that people have. Once they arrest somebody, they take their phones, they go through their phones, they start looking for who next to go and abduct. That is DSS for you. That is the way they operate. How many times will I tell you this? Please. And all of you, must all the big heavy hitters, all the big officers must, must move homes. Relocate your families and let nobody know where you are. And if you're going to save the number of a family member, please use a nickname. Don't write that person's name again. And for all you saboteurs, you can see how it's going, isn't it? They are falling already. It's not everything you announced live on air. I thank you all for listening this very evening, morning, noon, and night, depending on where you are. And I must reiterate with every clarity and sense of purpose for those who do not know before to understand now that to us, Biafra is more than a nation, more than a country. To us, it is our religion. And here on radio, Biafra is where we worship. Because I thank you very much for listening. And from me, from here, with all the love in my heart, believe it or not, I talk to you the way I do because I love you. It is good evening.